So I've seen these young ladies sitting on the makeup chair with their phones. Their life. And, and, they, and, the, and they, they, they're like trying to be pretty on the phone doing a video call while the makeup person is trying to put your character together. Hmm. Putting your character together, that's how much you're undermining yourself and the person because they're not just doing your makeup for you to look pretty. They're putting, putting your character, character together. together. Um, I guess that's how Joburg is. Yeah. We come across people who aren't as pleasant. Would you say that has been your experience of Joburg in the entirety of your career? I know it's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, but Joburg... You want to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but Joburg seems to have people who... Empathy is gone. People are unhappy because people who, are at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jo Joburg is a working town. Yeah, yeah. Now, p there are people like my son who were born here, so it's like their home place. Yeah. But I've taught him that our home is in the Eastern Cape. Sure, sure, sure. So he doesn't hold on to this as much as he holds on to our ancestral home in the Eastern Cape. So I don't think he would feel a way about it really too much. But there is a, there's just there is an attitude. Like, I'm, I'm here to work. Is, Why it, are you trying to get in my face? Why are you trying to get into my space? You know, I'm here to work. Is it a working town. Is it important, Sister Nambita, to have an ancestral home where Uti Inkabayami goes back to? Yeah. Where I can reboot, where I can re-establish myself? There you go. You, you've actually answered your question. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. My dad used to call it, um, used to call us pot plants because yeah. I was living in Canada and he's like, no, you guys are just pot plants. You are so far away from your roots. You're a pot plant. Go home. You're not rooted anyway, basically, not, yeah, where you are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. pot plant. I, get, I, I love that analogy. So, like, it's just sitting here on top of a table. Yeah. It can be there. It could be there. Like, There is no stability. There is no founding you see? energy. There is no see? foundation. So I hear you. Jobeg, That's Joburg. Joburg is full of pot plants. Yeah. Mm. You, in, 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 in observing your career, there is something that I see as a pattern. You get into the limelight to do your work, and then you recluse again and go live. The one that we don't know, um, who's probably the real person. Because, for example, we say, but there's probably unams or something with a nickname <laughs> that, that friends and the people who love you, the people you're close to, call you. Firstly, what's that nickname? And who does she represent? Who's that person? Now I see why you're doing this job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy. Okay, okay. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> you know what? Lungelo or Lungilo? Lungelo. Lungelo. So, when yeah. Lungelo alone was it? Yes, yes, yes. Um, it's a very interesting question, and I'm grateful that you feel um, that you acknowledge that and that yeah. you see that. There yeah. is a difference between work and yeah. life. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and what I would always say when I get to work is that I'm working for a living. Mm -hmm. So know that the reason I'm here is for my life, mm -hmm. not for being Ooh. here. I'm not living here necessarily. I don't live here. Yeah. I don't live here. Yeah. This is to facilitate Ooh. my life. My actual life. My actual life. Yeah. So if my son calls, mm -hmm. you take second. Sure. If my mother calls... You you take a pause. Mm, mm, mm. Know that right now. Yeah. Are we okay to proceed? Sure. And they say yes or they say no. And you know what? Mm -hmm. We are not fighting. Mm -hmm. We've agreed that these terms are not suitable for both of us. Mm -hmm. And we part ways. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. quite all right. I don't mind. But if you're gonna if you and I are gonna do business with each other, understand this. I work for a living. Mm -hmm. I'm working for a living. So my living takes precedence over my work. What happens in the living? Who is she in the yeah, living? Yeah, I'm so curious. Why do you think it's <laughs> private? <laughs> Why do you think it's private? <laughs> my living is, um, right now, I currently have the most ideal living arrangement ever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm living with my mother and my son. Wow. Right? Wow. <laughs> I'm like, 
I look around my house, I'm like, Wee! it's cross generational love yeah. from different generations like, that like pours both, into you from both ends, right? But, but that one thing that bugs me, and I need to whisper this the two of them are so close. Like sometimes I feel like, you know, the third wheel. Yes. I'm like, I'm like sitting there watching them having conversations with each other. I'm like, you know that you, you would not know each other without me. Wow. <laughs> just wanted to just put it out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on a daily basis, I need to go and affirm myself mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they may be close, mm -hmm. but they're nothing without me. They're nothing without me. <laughs> I'm, I'm the glue, the string that connects them. I'm the reason they both know each other. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. good, I'm good, yeah. You, you're not shy about speaking about your son. Um, I know most parents speak about their children a lot because it's a huge part of who they are and what they've become and the value they've contributed to, to, to society because that's what being a parent does. Um, for you, what does being a mother specifically to a son mean? Specifically to a son? Yeah. <clears throat> I have raised daughters as well. Let me tell you the difference. When I'm raising a girl child, I am raising somebody who's going to raise somebody. Mm -hmm. um, your children are your message to the future. Oof. So that's, 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 you know, yeah, boy yeah, or girl. Yeah, yeah. But the difference when you're raising, and I know Charmaine um, got the harsh side of me because I wanted to make sure that she was not taken advantage of mm. in the street. Mm. So I needed for her to know that she is loved, that she does not go outside of the house looking for love. Um, for the boy child, how to treat that person who does not know that she is loved, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. you do not take advantage of such a person, how to be the kind of man that I would want to be with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a result, he's like my best friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where do you get the, I don't know if it's, Vocab is a lack of a better word. Maybe agency, because you... Uh, I you, can never understand what people mean by agency. I, I'll, I'll try and explain it, right? Okay. Um, agency means that there's so many circumstances that are blocking you, ordinarily the normal person, to be able to cross that boundary and be able to be bold and make that decision. That's agency. Being bold in a scenario where most people are scared to be bold in that situation or in that upbringing or in that so i'm going where i'm going with I'm this i'm trying question. to find if there's a synonym for that you'll find it mama you're very good with english <laughs> <laughs> but where i'm going with this question is where do you get the agency to raise your children in a manner where you want them to be secure and where have where do this i get agency? the nerve yes Where'd you get the nerve? Where'd you get the nerve? Where you could have just... So agents is like trying to power it up. Uh, in, in fancy English. Like the nerve is... is, is it, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to take, take, take my sweater off. Yes, okay. yes. I'm going to yes. take my sweater off because it's getting kind of hot in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, where do I get the nerve? Um, I was raised by a diva. Okay. I was raised by a woman who had the nerve. I was raised by a woman who knew her worth. Mm -hmm and decided who she's going to be and how she's going to be that person. And I, she never said, do this, be this, but she imbued it. And I, as a result, learned it. I learned by watching her being this person. And I thought, wow, this is the person to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I then emulated. And then through talking with her, I learned the vocabulary of the, of the manner. And in a lot of my characters that I play, I actually do call on her spirit to just, okay, Power. I need this part of you yeah, and yeah, I need this yeah, part of you. Yeah. And it's not, you know, any kind of witch, witchcraft. Okay, it is kind of quickly, <laughs> you know, if you think about it that way. But it is recalling a certain aspect of her and accessing that in me mm -hmm. to pour into this one character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Do you mm -hmm, understand? Mm -hmm. So that is the, you know, that, that's what I mean by, you know, calling on her and, and invoking her to, to be part of this one. And um, there was that. And then there was my dad who was a strict um, uh, disciplinarian and everything had to be done in a very specific way of choice. So if you choose this, then stick with that choice. Don't, this wavering and wishy-washy does not work. Now, the line of work that he was in demanded discipline. Okay. So he brought discipline home. Okay. 
Do you understand? So in the way that we did things, if you say you're going to do this at this time, that's when you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. If you say you're going to do this in this way, that's how you're going to do it. If it changes, you let me know. We mm -hmm. communicate that. Life does happen to people and people happen to life. So if it's going to change, hey, listen, I'm going to be five minutes late. Hey, listen, uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to make it today. Let's try tomorrow again, please. Now, you can get upset about it, but I think you should be grateful that I told you. Otherwise, I could have made you sit here the whole day. Ghost you. <laughs> Do you yeah, understand? Yeah, yeah. But it is respecting of myself mm -hmm. that I make the call mm -hmm. to say, please kindly forgive me. I cannot make it. Or kindly forgive me. I'm going to be 10 minutes late. It could be that there is no other reason but I'm not ready to leave yeah, and I'm yeah, just yeah. sitting at my dining room table or in my couch just getting up the nerve, just getting sure, myself up sure, ready. Sure. And you're going to go, well, what, what, what's keeping you? Mm -hmm. And I don't owe you that answer. It's true. True. And my answer will be, I'll be there soon. Hey family, thank you so much for being loyal to Engineering Your Life. I know that if you're watching this, you're probably here for the second time or the third time. And please, if you're here for the second, third time, please may you kindly subscribe. Because if you subscribe, it helps us to get better conversation, get better guests, and get access to creating the best content that we can for you. So please don't forget to subscribe and make sure you continue watching this episode. You're communicating. Primarily, that's what you're doing. And you're respecting me enough to communicate. I'm respecting myself first. You're respecting yourself first. And then I'm respecting you. And then you respect me. Yes. And then now, why am I prying to understand, Uguti? Why are you getting into my life? Right? What do you want to know? Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to measure your worth by hmm. my in busyness? Yeah, yeah, It's got nothing yeah. to do with you. Absolutely. My being with you will be there will be when I arrive with you. Sure, Anything sure. before that's got nothing to do with you. Absolutely. You speak of, there's so many gems in what you said about your, your, your dad and the woman who raised you, whom I'm assuming is your grandmother. That's my grandmother, yeah. That, yeah. You said your dad was a disciplinarian, which he took from work a lot. At the time when dad was disciplining you, did it feel like, yo, dad, you too much? Or did you understand, or did you only understand later in life that that was necessary? Okay, so I did not know... I knew an aspect of his life, and after he passed away in 2020, mm. then I understood the other part of his life that sure. was the discipline. Um, mm. So he basically, part of his work, a large part of his work was getting people out of the country okay. that were um, in trouble with the you know, politically involved people. That So he would get them out of the country. Mm -hmm. So if he says, be at the corner of Republic and Jan Smarts at 12 p.m. 12 is 12. At five past 12, he's no longer there. Ooh. Your life depends on it. Hmm. So he brought that agency. Yeah. Home. <laughs> <laughs> the nerve. <laughs> he brought that yeah. urgency home. Yeah. He yeah. brought that energy home. And um, we didn't understand. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know. I mean, he couldn't tell us. I think his mother knew, he, my grandmother. So the two of them parented me, in, and it was like, you know, two generations parenting mm -hmm. me at the same time. But um, so so when he would get too harsh, she would stop him. Yeah. And when she would be too soft, he would like, no, but mama, you know. So I had it both ways. Yeah, and yeah, what a yeah. blessing that was. And it took me a long time to understand. And that question that you're asking, I never really felt it's too much mm -hmm. because when it got to be too much, she would say it okay, before I okay. even got a chance to say, I yeah, bow. Yeah. So... I never had the, the need to, to say it to him. I never needed to judge him because I had somebody advocating for me all the time. I'm generalizing. Is parenting the opposite right now in, in this current climate we're in where parents are actually too soft? I think we are a little bit too permissive. Okay. Um, I, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say this and... Um, I scratched my nose because I'm like, okay, get ready to go. I remember um, being on a set, I'm not going to say, um, where it was scripted, this child talks back at me. I'm like, when do I slap her? <laughs> I don't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, no, 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 she finishes and then she storms out of the room. I was like, oh, hell no. Mm -mm. I'm a closer woman. Mm. It ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. Try somebody else. Not in this household. They're like, but it's not in the script. I'm like, right, put, then put it in the script. Yeah. 
Because there is no Tosa woman who's going to allow a child to finish that sentence without salt, you know, arriving in her mouth. Sure, sure. There is just no way. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, uh, but that's part of what got me into trouble mm -hmm. in the industry, that I would stand up for such things. That's who we are. But now somebody else is going to go, oh, okay, because they are, you know, holding on to a job. They don't want to be labeled. And so now your child is watching this child on mm. television, talking back at a parent and getting away, away with it. it. Thereby eroding who we are. Oof. So on my watch, that will not happen. But somebody else, there is a producer out there who does not care about our culture. Mm. There is a director out there who has not experienced discipline. And does not and thinks no no it's okay it's cheeky <laughs> it's so cute no it's not you're eroding our culture hmm. you are killing us so now we've got a whole generation of kids that think they're entitled to challenge their parents hmm. how are you going to be, take guidance from me and challenge me at the same time you know somebody would said would say that no you, you confu you're confusing your character and your work and your and your personal beliefs but i i i'm actually echoing echoing your sentiments cuz you're saying that in the media space as actors we are shaping the narrative we, we are shaping are, culture I, what we do and i repeat this anytime anywhere yeah my job is to study human behavior yeah. and reflect it on Oof. society yeah now i come from a very uh, specific perspective. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Would you, as a Zulu child, talk back to your mother? I'd want to how sleep far, on the streets. <laughs> how far would you get? Yeah, yeah, I will be put back. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah. And now you're watching it on television mm -hmm. as a five-year-old thinking, and your mother laughing at it, thinking it's cute. Then you do it to her and she's going, Huh. She's confused. Huh. Because uh, or if she actually says, look at it, don't do that. Now you're confused because you saw her laughing at somebody doing that and you thought it's okay. She was giggling. She was giggling. What are we doing to our culture? What are we doing to our future generation by allowing this foolishness to, to go on? It's not cute. It's not. I had Vuyo Dabulo on the chair and he echoed a few sentiments where he said, I would reject roles because the script is not a representation of what I stand for. And they call you names. Yeah. Well, you know what's been happening to him in the media. Yeah. You yeah. know what's been happening to me in the media. Yeah. And that's because we stand for something. Yeah. Hmm. So, Mama, you're saying you're not allowed to stand for anything in this industry and that secures jobs. I did not say that. I did not say that. Yeah. Let's take it back a moment. Sure. When you stand for something, mm -hmm. um, you become a threat okay. to those who, who, who don't stand for anything. Hmm. And you might find that person is in power, mm -hmm. in a powerful position, mm -hmm. in a position of decision making, mm -hmm. but they don't have a value system. Hmm. No moral fiber. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if there's anybody without any moral fiber, but it Perhaps is so it's eroded, limited, limited yeah, eroded yeah. to such an extent that um, they don't recognize themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and anything goes. And then they encounter somebody who is so principled that there will, nothing like that would ever pass. I, I, and I, this, I, will, I, will, um, I had a, an experience where on Generations, it's going back quite a few years, and... Um, they said that Unuluntu says this, and, and I said, okay, so um, what do I hit her with? And they said, you don't. I'm like, no, 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 no. What do I hit her with? I don't hit her? Okay, what do I throw at her? Mm -hmm. You don't. Then what happens? I, 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 like, I don't see it on the script. Sure. Do, do you want me to make it up? They're like, no, you don't do anything. <laughs> Okay, no, it's not going to happen. You're not going to use my face to send that kind of message to the world. No, not going to happen. To 10 million South Africans. To tell a million South Africans that it's okay for kids yeah. to talk to their parents yeah. like that. Yeah. No, sorry. Yeah. And um, the, the, I was talking to the producer and he says, listen, let's just shoot this version. I'm like, oh, hell no. They do that with you. Now. Let's just shoot this one and then. I'm like, no, once you have it in the can, what, like... 
What reason do you have to pander to me after that? Mm -hmm. No, this is the only card that I hold and I will not do it. Mm -hmm. No. This is when, um, praise God, that moment was for me so defining okay. in that um, I refused to go on set. And I said, I will wait here. And I said, where's the writer? And let's talk to the writer. And they got uh, the writer on, on, on the phone. And I said, okay. Ungumni, she says, do okay. In your family, how far would you get with this sentence saying this, these words to your mother? Mm -hmm. And I read it to her. She goes, don't, don't finish it. I would not get very far. And I said, why do you want me to, to say it? She goes, give me five minutes. I'll fix it. Do you know who that was? Bongindaba. Wow. Up until today, that woman has my respect. Wow. Up until today. I, and to such an extent that when I left Generation, she was the one who got me back and said, Namita, I need a matriarch. Please come back. And I said, yeah. okay, fine, I'll do it. Yeah. Because it's her. Yeah. Yeah. Because I trust her. I trusted her in a moment when she had no reason to stand by me. She could have said, just go ahead and do it. Yeah. Instead, she went, oh, I didn't think of it that way. Sure. Let sure, me fix it. Sure, sure. I respect you, Namita. That's what she said in that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And earned my respect forever and a day. She reflected, then made change, yeah. and enacted change behavior after yeah. reflecting. Right. And based on principles. Right. So everybody wins because princi everybody wins. Pr principles win. <laughs> yeah. The script is still great. The script is great. Because she's and the creative. performance is organic. And the and the performance is organic. Yeah. Because we're not curating a fake, aggravated circumstance where Umawande has to tolerate. And do you know what happened? Zanande, remember Zanande Finyan was playing my daughter. Yeah. And she and I, oh my God, up until today, up until today, I love that child. And okay, she's not a child, but she's a child to me. Yeah. <laughs> I love her to bits. When, as soon as she started to say that and I reacted, she went, because she saw my face and went, <gasps> she knew that she had overstepped the line. And I knew that she had overstepped the line. And the moment was so crisp and the camera picked it up. And every parent, I, I know that every parent and child watching it drew a, a, a collective breath, went, <gasps> yes, oh, it's yes, going to go down. Yes, yes, it's going to yes. go down. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, are you seriously going to continue? Yeah. And she took a step back and tried to talk, and I took a step forward. She stopped talking. I did not have to do anything. She understood. I understood. And the nation understood. As a segue, because we're there speaking about <laughs> you and Noluntu, <laughs> this, is a, this is a cultural shift yeah. that Noluntu making tea that is poisonous for Umau and <laughs> Please explain to me what was going on there. And, and, Who and, does not have a naughty child? <laughs> <laughs> Who does not have a naughty child? Hey, do you remember there was uh, on social media this woman, this girl who yes. was a god party yes, in yes, so yes, she yes, was yes, she <laughs> now I pray that it wasn't because of Nolunto's tea that yes. she decided <laughs> <laughs> I hope not but um, you know children will do things mm -hmm. And on television, you will, we will heighten that. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll take it a step, you know, yeah. above. Just dramatize a bit. Dramatize it a little bit. So, yeah. yes, this time it was a tea, yeah. you know. And, of course, oh, it was, oh, as an actor, to have to play that transformation of character. Oh, it was such a gift for me. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. You, you can get, you know, um, uh, lethargic mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and and get into a rut it's about monotonous it, it feels monotonous, monotonous. Yeah. they gave me this character that from and and Menzi mm -hmm. and I would sit across the table and I'm wearing mismatched clothes and seeing absolutely nothing wrong with it <laughs> and looking at him and and this is one time like um, we're having dinner and I start to pour the wine onto my plate and start eating and we literally we just you know can't, like grab stuff out of the air and just yeah. do that. And so his reaction was, this one, gravy. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, no, it was organic because I just did that to him. Yeah, and he yeah. was like, ah, ah, okay. And then I grabbed the, glass, the bottle and I was like, mm, mm. and continue the conversation. And we, and Menz was like, where boom blood? With small nose, <laughs> <One day. laughs> and and it was unheard of on a Sophie to just go off script. And Correct. Just, 
but we were bringing such jams because yeah, yeah, w- yeah. Ronnie was like, yeah, let them do it. Mm, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Was the director? And, uh, yes. Yes. And again, when you've got a director that just again we we butted heads at the beginning, and he would like, okay, and then she takes a sip. I'm like, why? No, no, I want you to go there and take a sip. I'm like, okay, do you want me to go there or is the sip more important? Which is more important to you? That I physically am there? He says, I want you to physically be there. And I said, okay, fine. I'll be physically there and do what the character needs. Is that okay? Is that a good... And be like, fine. I'm like, okay. And then I challenge myself in that moment because he has now given me leeway to give him something amazing. Yeah, yeah. Far yeah. more amazing than just taking a sip. Correct. And then he goes... So then I earned his trust. Mm-hmm that I will go to where you want me to do, to go, but I'll do what the, the character needs. So then he and I had that. So when I would sit at the table, he goes, just roll. <laughs> just roll. <laughs> I understood. I would get the script, the director's script. I know where they want me to go, and I start choreographing myself. Yeah, I start blocking yeah, myself. Okay, yeah. fine. Here, I'm going to do this. There, I'm going to do that. There, I'm going to do this. And I show up on set, and I'm ready. I'm going to speak about now you, you've just triggered me about you get the director's script and you visualize it and you block yourself off and you put yourself spiritually in tune with the script um, because I want us to segue later into how nowadays people get acting gigs for being popular. Meanwhile, there are people like you who are so professional and disciplined about your craft that you go through all these lengths to try and give the best performance. But I want to start here. You speak out, you speak about generations. <gasps> <laughs> so sorry. You speak about generations with so much love and and passion. Would you say it's your most rewarding role? Um inner reward, not financially. Let, let, let me let me um say this to you. Who's your f- favorite girlfriend? What? I get that. Question answered. One of the most rewarding. Let's put it that way. Who's one of your most favorite girlfriends? <laughs> You know, you when you take on a character, mm-hmm. that is your person. And you give it everything. And you give that person everything. Yeah. And then you move on to the next one and you give that person everything. One of the more defining roles that I've had in my life was actually on stage. <clears throat> Years ago at the beginning of my career, I played Harriet Tubman. And it was very defining for me in that um, it was still at the beginning of my career. It was such an amazing role. It was bigger than I was ready. Okay. I wasn't ready for such magnitude. I really wasn't. I was a child. So in my 20s, I had just begun, I had just gone professional. But the director saw something in me that I did not know yet. And he pushed me. He pushed me to be the person that he saw that I could be. Mm -hmm. So it was excruciating. It was six month uh, school touring. We would do two plays, two different plays. One was for the uh, kindergarten, and one was for the high schools. Yeah. The power of Harry Tubman was for high schools. The, the the run was for six months, and we'd do three shows a day. Mm. Two plays, three shows a day mm. for six months. By the time Friday rolled around, Friday afternoon rolled around, I was bop. <laughs> yeah. Knee yeah. knee, just pop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I lived in Toronto, but for the show I had to go to St. St. Catharines, okay, which was like on the other side of Hamilton, and it was horrendous. It was excruciating. That at the time is when I started my locks. I had to come unto myself. I had to, so it was very defining for me. Mm-hmm. Also, my family was like, ah, this acting thing, we just, so my dad flew from England to come and convince me to go back. Listen, you do psychology, you're great. You do maths, you're great. You do c- computer programming, you're great. Why are you doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, dad, okay, fine. Come and see me on stage. If after see you, you see me on stage, you still want me to quit, I'll quit. He came and saw uh, me play Harriet Tubman and he went, go back and talk go back. And that was it. So that was, for me, was defining in that there were so many historical things that happened. Yeah. But any actor worth her salt or his salt would not be able to answer the question you ask. 
I love that response because once again, you're speaking to, you always speak to going back to your root. Now you speak about your dad again yeah. and how that moment affected uh, how he feels it, about what you're doing. Yeah. Right? And you know, you, you as an actor in your career, you get ebbs and flows. You get successful times and, and difficult times. I would call on him any time that I would call and say that I'm going to do. I need help. He goes, what do you need? Because from that moment, he decided that what I do is worth doing. Wow. And so he was going to support me. He, and he did. He saw value. He saw value. In the, in, in, in the storytelling that you do and, and, and what it brings to society. I don't know how he defined it. We've never had that conversation. Yeah. But he saw value and he then decided that that's what I do and this is who I am. And he's going to support that. Mtata has been in the news for wrong reasons in the past few right. months. Right. Ooh, and, takes and, a sip. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of talented people, even politicians, many great men and women come from Umtata. I was there about four weeks ago. Uh, Doing what? <laughs> uh, for work. And, and when I landed there, and I landed at the airport, and everybody was just even in the car, the driver that I was with was telling me about these extortion things. I was like, geez, it's so sad that Umtata is being defined around this right now. When there's so much rootedness, Umtata, there are people who are still normal, man, who still feel like, no, man, I've left Joburg. This feels like calmness and normality. And we go home to that. Right? And you to get to go home school. to that. And you go right? home to the farm. You go yeah. home to your family. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about how Umtata is at the moment versus what you grew up it was. I feel sad about it. Yeah. I'm still holding on to my family home. I feel sad about it in that um, the, and we're having this conversation at dinner with my family uh, about what has happened to, to our family, like to our home environment. You know, it used to be so um, prestigious being from Umtata. Still is. It used to be so, um, um, I, I, I don't know, it was like, mm, 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 you know, mm, there was mm. that thing that, yeah, there was pride in it, yeah. you know, people had businesses, people, um, and as you say, you know, a lot of uh, elites mm -hmm. came out of that mm -hmm. and still go home to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but there has been, mom was saying that it's because um, when, you um, the, 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 the government structures were taken away from there. It collapsed the economy. And okay. that's, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. And she's right about that. Um, but also people took uh, lost pride in themselves. And a lot of um, foreign elements came in and, and looked down on it. Keep in mind, our people were still in the state of ungovernability you know, um, trying to overturn the apartheid government. And then immediately, and as mom puts it, we never got a time to hug ourselves and each other as a family of being South Africans yeah, yeah. before other people came in and brought in their own... Agendas. Well, their own energies, correct, really. Correct, it correct. did not have to be a negative thing. Yeah. But imagine you are feeling wounded yeah. And somebody else comes in with their own energy mm -hmm. into your space. You don't have time to heal mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. now you're dealing with this and you're dealing with that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I remember from being um, out of home, being in Canada, you could see people looking, uh, littering to such an extent that it had to become a law that you do not litter, that it is punishable to litter. And then, it, then the streets became clean. And I remember it, in Winnipeg, in the Midwest, in the middle of, you know, Bundoland in Canada, we had to have those rules. And that's because there were people from other places who did not value the place that they were in, and they would just throw litter. We need to do that here and say, if you litter, I will throw you in jail. Mm -hmm. Now stop it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So people that came and did not value our space continued to do what they do to places that they don't care about hmm. and we joined them hmm. because there was no punitive um, um, action against it. Do we have the responsibility, the elites that we speak of, those of us who've gone on to greener pastures for the lack of a better word, to go back, unite and fix? That's a very interesting question, yeah? Um, 
Do we have the responsibility? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it would be good if. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I do not... No, I don't ascribe to that way of thinking. Okay. I don't. I don't ascribe. I, and it's interesting because I'm only now um, exploring it. I don't. I I do think that it should be a pride thing. Okay. For example, I, I tried, and I'll say this on record, the first primary school that I went to, E.W. Pierce in Nambilana, I went back there and I saw that the ablutions, the toilets that the kids were using are the same ones that I used. Mm. In 1971, hmm. exactly the same thing. And I said, okay, um, first of all, there are kids here who've got holes in their uniforms. I'm going to bring uniforms to you. Could you please give me permission to, I'm still waiting for that permission. Hmm. I said, I've got a construction company that is willing to come and change the ablutions here. Hmm. And we will restructure it all. Please, can I have permission to do this? I'm still waiting. Hmm. That's going back 10 years now. Hmm. So as much as I want to do it, there is a system there that says, yeah, may, no, no, just give us the contract. And then uh, in the meantime, the kids are being are violated yeah, yeah. in that open space. Yeah. Because now you've got this girl child who's peeing in an open space that the boys and the girls are walking past and strangers from the, you know, or crossing through the school are going past. And that's a violation. And that child grows up not feeling worthy of self, mm. having a low self-esteem because she was violated before she even knew self-worth. Mm. Growing up into an adult who you meet at the bank as a bank teller and you are encountering them and they are unhappy. Or the Uber driver that I just experienced yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is how far it reverberates. Mm. Years later into your life. Because so-called greedy people prioritize Themselves. their greed yeah. at the expense of young girls being violent. At the expense of tomorrow. Yeah. At the expense of tomorrow. There's a young girl out there um, who's like, yo, Umam Nambita is in her late 50s and she stands her ground. She loves who she is and we know her to be a strong woman who has strong principles and represents that ideal mom that you'd want to be one day, that ideal strong woman that you want to be one day. Um, But right now I'm 24, I'm 23, and I'm going through so much rejection in relationships, rejection in family. Maybe I fell pregnant young. Rejection in jobs, auditions. How do you deal with rejection? How have you dealt with rejection? And how do you consistently deal with rejection in a healthy manner? Somebody out there loves you. Hmm. Somebody out there loves you. I remember one time um, the <laughs> the billboards came, save us from this diva. Nambita's trying to take over. Ooh. Oh, no, no, this is a prima donna. They started with prima donna. Mm-hmm. And I cried. I wept. Honest to goodness, I wept. And my son came into my bedroom on a Sunday and, um, and got into bed with me and said, Mom, what's going on? And I and I said they're calling me a prima donna, and, they, and he says, but what 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 does prima donna mean? And so I said, prima means first, donna means lady. So they, wait a minute, first lady. <laughs> 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 like, wait 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 wait. Prima donna, first lady. God damn it! Why am I crying? <laughs> mm, mm, mm. It didn't work. Yeah. Examine. Examine, research, learn, but find um, safety in the people that love you. Okay. There is somebody out there who loves you. I had my son with me and he innocently just said, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, this is what it means. And and then he's looking at me like, where's the insult? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know, baby. Yeah. (laughs) But it hurt. Well, I thought it it hurt. hurt. (laughs) Wait a minute! Yeah, 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 yeah. By the time they call me diva, I'm like, yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am a diva. Yeah. And thank you for you know giving me that crown. Sure, sure. Thank you. Ooh. Yeah, I wear it well. I, come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Because now I am empowered. Mm. 
I see the word for what it is, the, uh, the world. God created the world through his word. Mm. How dare you think you're going to hurt me with word mm. when I was created by the word? Yeah. So. I've been kept by the word. I've been kept by the word. Yeah. And when I flounder, I go back to the word mm. to strengthen me. Mm. Who guidance. the hell do you think you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. And in my line of work, I read words to bring this character to life. And you think you can insult me with a word? Mm -hmm. Try something else. Yeah, yeah. Try yeah. something else. Research, reevaluate, and get back up, girl. Get back up. Just get back up. But... We do need that love. Okay. There is somebody, you know, and, and, and we're so quick in, in today's society, we use all encompassing, like uh, uh, global words. Nobody loves me. I will never get this. It's too much. It's mm. too this. And, and, and there's in my personal environment, oh, he's just too pretty. I'm like, no. T-O-O -O is a negative word. It's a negative word. So you cannot use that to communicate something that's positive. And when you're saying she's too pretty, you're saying that she does not deserve to be that pretty. Hmm. Listen to yourself. Yeah. You're speaking negativity. Stop it. Very pretty. Yeah. That's yeah. a good word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good word. It feels good saying it. Mm -hmm. It feels good receiving it. Correct, correct, correct. But that T-O-O -O is a negative word. Stop using it. Yeah. It's too cold. Don't like it. Mm, mm, mm. Too pretty. For whom? Do you understand the difference? I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. So we need to be careful how we use the word. And we need to respect the word. And we need to value the word. Yeah. Social media has eroded respecting words. Yeah, and they truncate things like you are becomes the you and the are, and now we can't see a difference between they, they are, and there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> my grandmother would have a few days. Yeah, right. You. <laughs> she was a school teacher. Everything had to be right. right. On point. <laughs> um, I forgive. I okay. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Because, first of all, you're not my child. And it's not my place. Now, quite often on set, they, uh, um, like if you come and you play my son on set, then I will take you on. And I'm like, Lungel, in this time space, you are my son and I will treat you as my son. We organically relate as mother and son so that when we're on camera, it we translates. don't have to, it translates. Yeah. But child, you, you, don't, you don't do that. Yeah. You don't do that. And you'd be like, yeah, but now you're going to talk to me like you talk to your mother. I'm like, mm -mm, you don't do that. You don't do that. Yeah, yeah. By the time you leave, hopefully there will have been a transformation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, there are some people that to, to whom that does not translate. You did mention um, people that have not trained. Mm -hmm. And we had that conversation. You know, I, we did Soft Life recently, mm -hmm. and there were young people there. They were not influencers. They were craft people okay okay and i'm so grateful to show max and uh Vusi that he uh Vusi zion was the executive producer sure he went and got young actors but actors yeah yeah who care about the craft the young people that are actors and the only difference between them is she and i U uzimi for example is experience that's the mm -hmm. only difference mm -hmm. that's it that's mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. she has love for the craft she's pushing she's and and, and i was like okay let me help you mm -hmm. I know where you're going. Let me help you. Mm -hmm. um, whether she received me or not, I really will never know because yeah, yeah. I've not encountered her since. But I try to leave a part of me with her mm -hmm. and the young man that played my son and the young lady. that. So I try to leave a part of me with them because I know where they are going yeah, and I know yeah, how yeah. tough it's going to be for them in their principles. Now, you're going to encounter the influencer. <laughs> And she said, because she's pretty and she's got so many flock followers. And likes. And likes. <laughs> like, subscribe, and follow. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And it's tough yeah. because they've worked hard for that, yeah. but they didn't work hard for this. Mm -hmm. So they are out of their element. Oof. What do you do when you're out of your element? You hold on to what you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to then learn something else Oof. because you're trying to be strong in what you know. I wish, I wish, it's fine, you are now here. Show some respect for where you are. Just a little bit. Show some, show some respect for the people that you find here that have gone to school for this. They may not have the, as many likes and followers as you, but they know this space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This space is Humble their your, territory. This is their territory. Yeah. Humble yourself to the experience, mm -hmm. and you might find that you become an amazing actor with a million followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now you have both. Now you've got both. Because humility was at the center of how you operate. Yeah. Yeah. And humility has got nothing to do with humiliation. Mm. Humbling yourself is not humiliation. Humility is self-imposed. Humiliation is other-imposed. Yeah, yeah, when you yeah. impose it on yourself to humble yourself, it is so valuable. It is a gift to yourself and to the person that you're humbling yourself to. So try it. Have you ever encountered in the sets that you've worked on one who was the influencer rather than one who's willing to learn and humbled themselves to become a better person in their craft? Don't give me names. Don't, don't worry about that. But <laughs> I want to know about the experience. Oh, boy. <laughs> There's an actor that I worked with years ago who has now become an influencer. <laughs> and she's forgotten the craft. Oof. I've watched, you know, as actors... Putting together the character has many departments. You've got the wardrobe department, the person that's going to dress your character. You must be in agreement with that person. Okay. You've got the makeup department that is, you know, affecting what you look like on your face. That, that you must be in agreement with that person. It, it, it's a collaboration. Do you understand? Um, you've got the, you know, the set people, the props, and um, the art department. That that's another level of collaboration. You've got the camera, the lights. It's all of them are collaborating with you to help you put together this character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to capture the moment. Disrespecting any of those people is disrespecting yourself. <laughs> so I've seen these young ladies sitting on the makeup chair with their phones. They're live. And, and, they're, and, the, and they're, they're, they're like trying to be pretty on the phone doing a video call while the makeup person is trying to put your character together. Hmm. <laughs> Putting your character together, that's how much you're undermining yourself and the person because they're not just doing your makeup for you to look pretty. They're, they're putting, putting your character, character together. together. Hey family, thank you so much for being loyal to engineering your life. I know that if you're watching this, you're probably here for the second time or the third time. And please, if you're here for the second, third time, please may you kindly subscribe because if you subscribe, it helps us to get better conversation, get better guests, and get access to creating the best content that we can for you. So please don't forget to subscribe and make sure you continue watching this episode. And you're absent for it. Oof. For the formation of your character, you're absent. The foundation, you are mm Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And then they're going to go to the director and like, look what she did to my makes. Look, look, look what she did to my face. My makeup is all wrong. You were talking while she was trying to put lipstick on you. You were disrespecting the person who is assisting you. And you think <laughs> a million followers, those million people don't know your character. Hmm. And we've just experienced your character and we do not like it. Hmm. So, uh, yes, I have experienced such people on set. And, oh, my gosh, they're flushing on my face right now <laughs> as I'm speaking. It's quite an amount of them. It's taking, taking a lot for me to not say, what, you know, the names. But, um, yes, I've, I have encountered it. And I find that the boys are easier to deal with than the girls. Sure. Yeah. And that's because the girls have a lot of pressure on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we must give them grace. Yes. I wish they'd give themselves grace, though. Mm. Grace comes from within. Mm. Yeah. You're very open about, uh, and I don't think you'll have to correct me, but I'll see if I get it right. You're 57 years old. I am. Um, which means you're probably in the best years of your life because there's a lot of self-actualization 
the more we mature in stages beyond age, we, we become who we are and we know who we are so much. I am an introvert of introverts. Like among introverts, I'll still be the introverted one in the group. I know, I know. And I'm going to tell you, um, yes, I'm going to explain it to you. Then I just, <laughs> don't give me that face. <laughs> um, I grew up like that. And I grew up the observer mm -hmm. sitting in the corner. And I was not unhappy in the corner. You must understand. So when you see somebody sitting in the corner, please, they're not unhappy. That's who they are. That's, that's, they're living it. And I live vicariously through all the extroverted person. I'll give you an example. I remember um, the first time that I worked on Generations, they used to have Friday night parties. So after rap on Friday, their drinks and whatever. And I remember Brenda Fassi shows up and she and I are sitting at the table and we're both doing the same thing, like recoiling into a corner and yeah, we're both sitting yeah, there like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and then we struck a conversation and then we got like close with each other and we just chatted away. And so somebody saw her being animated and me being animated and thought, oh, yeah, they're awake. But it was because we were with each other that we formed a trust moment and we could then just, you know, open up a little bit more. Correct. And now they wanted to perform. She looks at me. She goes, okay, I got to do this. And then she gets on the table and goes, ah! She does all of that. And I knew she was putting it on. Mm. When I came in, I needed a moment. I yeah. don't know if you remember. Yeah, I, yeah. I needed sure, a moment. Sure, sure. And that's a moment to, okay, you don't know these people. It's okay. You are safe. I needed to embrace myself, mm -hmm. to calm myself, to be able to be open with you. Yeah. Otherwise, I would not be able to have this yeah, conversation. So yeah. this is something that I have learned to do for myself so that because the interviews are part of what of, of my job. Yes, yeah, it's part yeah. of what I do. Yeah. So, and I avoid them. <laughs> like I don't, That's why I said we're very privileged. I don't <laughs> like talking to strangers. Yes, I really yes, do not. Yes, yes. I, and um, and it's not because I don't like you. It's mm -hmm. because I just feel more comfortable with myself, mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the people that I know. So now I know you. Yeah. yeah. But that's because I. It counseled myself into sure, a space where sure. I'm like, okay, he, his name is Lungelo. He's like, yeah. we, we, we like Lungelo. We're okay with Lungelo. We'll find out more about him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, what do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> but there are so many of us out there. Yeah. And, and you will find that some of the most amazing, talented actors are introverts. Because what do we do? We study human behavior. And we reflect it on society. And you can't learn anything with your mouth. You can't hear anything with your mouth open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the biggest things that has come to light in my personal life, in my journey of um, becoming who I am. Um, what is that? Who is that? My inner being. I'm doing a lot of inner work at the moment. I'm reading a lot of books. It sounds like it. I'm reading a lot of books. Uh, I'm consuming a lot of sermons. I'm consuming a lot of positive podcasts right um uh, and one of the biggest thing that has struck me is finding my community finding my community of mm. of like-minded people mm. and when i say like-minded people you know when we're growing up we think it's only family that you must love and embrace and bring close in. yeah so you're finding a tribe outside of your right? family <laughs> i'm finding a tribe mm. and i the way i'm layering this conversation is in finding my tribe how important has friendship been for you in finding tribes? So your question is, in finding tribes, how yeah. has um, friendship, friendship been, been so important? Would you say friendship is important? Or actually, the more mature I become, I'm like, mm, friends are a waste of time. Actually, you do have friends and those friends are within your family. Okay. I was raised like that. Okay. I was raised where um, <laughs> um, my parents their generation, they were friends with each other. And so when they visit each other, then their kids become my friends. I hear you. I hear you. And I remember one time my grandmother, there's a family across the road from our farm and they, they had kids there and I wanted to play with them. And I would be swinging on the gate and like, oh my gosh, I wish I could go there and play with those kids. I don't know them. I want to know them. And I went to mama and I said, mama, and she went, 
Oh, Mdana, what did I do wrong? Yeah. What is it out of everything that I provided for you here that I did not do, that you have to go and look for it over there? That was the last time I asked to go out. <laughs> <laughs> then look, she was so sad. I'm like, I caused her hurt. Yeah. I hurt her. I will never do that. Mm, 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 <laughs> you know? Mm. And for me, my family, my cousins, those are my friends. Those are the people that I know uh, anytime, any day. Anytime, any day. Mings and I are like the same age. And we do not talk for an entire year. I pick up the phone, Mings, like, yo, Nams, how's it going? You were asking about Nams. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I got yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and it's like we just spoke last week. Yeah, yeah. They heard that I was not feeling well. Who shows up in my door? And she was like honking at the gate. I'm like, because I was not taking any calls. I switched off my phone. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, you are going to talk to me. Mm. And she said, and she talks. Oh my God, she talks. Oh my God, my sister talks. And she sat there, pulled up a chair, sat next to my bed and continued talking nonstop. And I'm like, so the only way I can get her to shut up is if I get up from this bed, right? I guess I'm getting up. <laughs> <laughs> she got me out of bed. And that was the community you needed at the time that that's, you didn't know you needed. Yeah. And that's the value of friendship that you found in your sister. So I do have friends outside of my blood family. Yeah. Um, some of them understand that I'm quiet mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't reveal myself. I don't, I'm not that open. Um, but there's another friend of mine who I love so dearly, Sonia. And she's also similar to me. And I'm like... And I've been thinking about her a lot lately, but I did not pick up the phone. Yeah. And I bet you she's thinking about me a lot yeah, lately yeah. and she's not picking up the phone. That spiritual connection. It's a spiritual connection. We're yeah, good. Yeah. But um, I'm like, okay, no, no, I, I, you need to call Sonia. Yeah, okay, I should. Two days go by. You really need to call Sonia. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We have not had a beef. There's no fight, nothing. But that's who I am, my heart, my soul. It's all compacted in here. And I'm, I'm okay with that. We young people, uh, maybe once again, it's Joburg hustle culture, but we're struggling with longevity of friendships. You speak like you saying that you can go a year without speaking to people you, you love and you pick up the phone and they're there at your doorstep mm. because they'll, they'll show up for you when it matters, yeah. right? Yeah. What do you think we nowadays, there's a lot of struggles in friendships and we even see public friendships fall out in our faces. Yeah, like, why, why do you do that to yourself? Um, do you know, I, I do have um, friends that are, that are in the public eye, but mm -hmm. nobody... Okay, now everybody knows that Phil is my friend. Mm -hmm. But for years, nobody knew about that. Mm -hmm. And I think we got... We posted a picture of the two of us being, like, so relaxed, and people went, you know each other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're, like, 15, 20 years apart, but yeah. we are, like... He's, yeah. he's my he's my boy. Yeah. He's yeah. like he's my boy. Yeah. And and you know so he is of a different generation almost like it's like on the you know the edge there. But I think what has happened right now and it's happened and I watch it I watch a lot of um social media in the you know US and Canada based and it's placing so much value in me 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 and my feelings. Mm. And not the correct one. It's not the honoring of self. It's not the respecting of self. Because the respecting of self encourages me to respect you. Yeah. Honoring of myself encourages me to honor you because it extends out. Do you understand? But the way that they're doing it right now is you must acknowledge my feelings. You must honor me. I demand that. And what happens is if both of us are of the same way of thinking, who's going to honor who? Who's going to respect who? Mm. Then we walk away from each other because now we are the same ball, the same hard ball bouncing off of each other. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. There's a reason why we've got the yin and the yang and the give and the take. Because this moment is yours, the next moment is mine. Do you understand? It's the seesaw of life. And if we balance it, then we can both have the highs and the lows and we enjoy each ride. But right now there's a selfishness 
that is pervasive in our society with young people and the demand for acknowledgement without reciprocation. We're nearing the end of our conversation soon. Okay. But before I get there... I and want... we actually got through a glass. Can right? <laughs> before we get there, you spoke about the word being your root, you going back to the word and being created by the word. What does God, your roots, and your ancestors mean to you? A lot. That's a quick answer. Um, I was raised in the church. I was raised with a church in, in the yard because my grandfather was a priest. And we moved from you know, town to town to town to town, and there was always a church. So that's always been my foundation. By the time I could speak, by the time I was five years old, I could lead the evening prayer. I could lead the morning prayer. I was raised that you must do the morning prayer, you must do the evening prayer. My grandmother and I, our pastime was sitting and opening the, the, the Psalms and marking for, you know, so that you can do the Psalter. And so for me, the music it was ingrained again in me because she taught me how to, da, 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 okay, fine. And you mark it here, you mark it there. And so all of that, praising God has been, for me, a musical journey. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was never something that I choose to do it. It was when I feel this way, I praise God. Mm -hmm. When I feel that way, I praise God. When I, so all of it has been such an intrinsic part of yeah. me. And your that, identity. And my identity. Yeah. That when they're counting me down, uh, and we're going action in five, four. I'm saying my prayer. Huh. I'm doing my cross and inviting God into this space. That is something that I was raised with. It's not something that I have to put on or try and do or try to remember. I found, though, there was a time when I was so unwell and so injured emotionally that I had to remind, that I noticed that I had not been praying at night. And I noticed that because I was struggling to sleep. And the way that I put myself to sleep is by saying the Lord's Prayer or saying Psalm 23. And I'm like, that's why I can't sleep. I didn't say the prayer. Because that's my routine. And my brain says, okay, we're falling asleep now. And we say this prayer and we say this prayer. And boom, we're asleep. So for me, praying is breathing. And breathing is praying. Last but not least, what's that one thing in life you know for sure? <laughs> Love is. Love is. God is love. Mm -hmm. Love and fear cannot reside in the same place. Mm. Um, if you love what you do, you cannot fear it. Mm. You can be apprehensive and anxious about doing it well. But if you love what you do, you cannot fear it. Mm. You do need a certain amount of anxiety and a, and a certain amount of discomfort, a certain level of discomfort to do your job well. That anxiety and that discomfort is you checking yourself and making sure that you are keeping up with your standards. Your level of worth is, is in place. And that's what that anxiety is. And if you don't have that anxiety, you're not doing it right. That I know for sure. Yeah. What I also do know for sure is that I am loved and I am capable of love. And each character that I portray, I love. When you do the inner work to respect yourself, you're then able to pour out respect onto others. Sis Nambita keeps on saying that she operates from a place where she loves herself, she respects herself, she knows that she's loved, and that's why she operates from a place where she respects others, gives them the love that they deserve, and communicates that, communicates that well to them, rather, and even has boundaries where boundaries need to be put in place. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Sis Nambita. I hope you continue sharing love with others as we encourage you with this incredible conversation. 
with this incredible woman. Sister Nambisa, thank you so much oh my for your gosh, time. Oh my gosh, that was painless. It, 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 was, <laughs> it was an absolute privilege. Thank you, for me as well. It was an absolute privilege. You um, are such an amazing person. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm 30 years old. I used to watch you when I was 14, 15, <laughs> not knowing that this moment will come. But because I, I, I received a calling two years ago to start this podcast, I followed it. And look at what God has blessed me with. Thank you so much. <laughs>